Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. And good morning, everyone. Uh, I always, always love Sunday morning, especially when it's uh, sunny outside. Um, to be honest, I am finding it a little weird watching hockey when it's as warm as it is. And then the picture they're playing in Florida just is mind-boggling to me because it's like 45 degrees and super humid. But uh, it's always hockey season in Canada, I guess, right? Um, but man, that's an honor uh, as it is every week to be able to have the opportunity to share um, just speaking from my heart, you know, it's something that I don't take lightly, um, this call that I have to, to share the gospel and to share um, the, the Bible with, with us as a church. And I, so it's something I don't take lightly. Um, it's something that I dedicate a lot of my time and energy to, to do my best to present the gospel in a, in a real way. Um, and so, again, just thank you for being a part of it. Uh, I know I'm not perfect, you know, through all of it, but I appreciate each and every one of you. And I pray, as I've been praying for us as a church, I'm praying that y'all have a good summer. You know, a summer that's filled with rest, filled with connection, um, filled with just time being with your family, time of prayer. And I, I just been praying that we all will have a restful summer because I think we need it. Um, I can't be the only one who's feeling a little tired, um, that it's been you know, six months, you know, by the time winter's done, I'm tired of winter, you know, and then by the time summer's done, I'm not tired of summer yet, <laughs> right, because uh, winter seems to go forever, but uh, it's an important time, summer, you know, as, as we've been sharing, you know, summer's an important time, a time of connection and rest and outdoor adventures and activities, and so I pray that you do get some time away as a family this summer to just be together and, and pray together and get into nature because it's so important, um, and so again, I just want to encourage you with that, but today I want to I share a message today called Walking by Faith. And I think we all need a faith boost. Um, I think we all need faith to, see, when we see the storms coming or we see the storms that we're just coming out of or we see the storm we're in the middle of, we need a faith boost. We need to learn to continue to walk by faith. Uh, I think it's, it's easy to walk by anxiety. It's easy to walk by all our emotions, but we need to stop uh, following our emotions all the time and learn to walk by faith. Um, and, and to let the faith that, that we sang about earlier, this peace and this faith to rise up inside of us, not just for ourselves, but for our families and for our church and for our city. You know, even as a church, we've had so many things spoken and vision seen about our church. And, and we're not living in the fullness, I believe, of what God has called us to be as a church yet. But I think that as our faith continues to rise up, we're going to start to see some of the things that people have seen that we've seen in visions actually come to pass. And, and I, I'm very excited um, for kind of where we're going as a church, as I always share, you know, some of the things in my heart. And just speaking of that, I want to encourage you tonight, we got our AGM. I want to encourage you to come out to our AGM tonight. We're going to go through uh, financials from last year, some of the things we did last year, as well as some of the things we're looking forward to. So I want to encourage you to come out tonight. It's at 6 p.m. Um, I encourage you again to be a part of that this evening, to hear some of the things God has done and will be continuing to do. And again, we need this boost of faith, a boost in our courage and a boost in our faith to keep on going because God isn't done. God isn't done with our church. God isn't done with your family. God isn't done with you. God isn't done with your business. And I know sometimes things get crazy and chaotic, but know that, that if you're still going, God's not done with it yet and he's not done with you yet. But we gotta have a faith boost. And so I wanna go through a famous story, uh, a story I've, probably the story I've preached or spoke or the, the most times, to be honest, in my life is the story of when Peter walks on water. And I think there's some key things um, that we can learn uh, from this story and when Jesus and Peter walk on water. And so we're gonna be in Matthew chapter 14, uh, verse, starting in verse 22. And this is what it says in verse 22. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills to pray. Uh, he went up to the hills by himself to pray, and night fell while he was there alone. 
Then meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had, wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on water. Now, we, I think a lot of us, we've read this story. Again, I've spoken this story. I've shared it. But I don't want it to lose its power. Because there, this is a powerful, powerful, powerful moment. It starts, Jesus says, go on the boat. You guys are fishermen. You know how to drive a boat. You know how to move a boat. You guys know how it's done. You've been doing it for years. You know how it works. Go to the other side. I'll see you later. And what does Jesus do? He goes up to pray. He, he goes up to spend time with his father. He grows up, goes up to spend some time in solitude. And then after this, of course, the disciples, they're on the boat and they're scared and, and they, they really don't know what to do. Three o'clock in the morning, he says that they were in trouble, far from land, for a strong wind had risen. Again, these are men who knew how to be in a boat. These are men that, that, that had been in these situations before. But how many of you know, so many times the disciples find themselves in a boat and they're in trouble. Right, then this is something they were used to. In fact, some of them were expert fishermen. They'd been on boats before, but these storms that came up in some ways scared them more than anything they had seen before. But I think the first kind of idea, or the first thing that I think is that every miracle is prefaced by solitude. See, if you're in the middle of looking for a miracle or you're waiting for a miracle, or you're waiting to, to start the journey, I think that the start of us actually seeing the miracles happen or see the things that we've been dreaming about come to place, it doesn't start with working harder. What it starts with is us spending time in solitude and prayer. Now, for the past few weeks, I've been talking a lot about prayer because it's been something that's been on my mind and my heart that is something that we need to be doing as individuals for our families and for our churches. And if we want to see big things happen, if we want to see uh, revival, if we want to see things happen in our families, it starts with us getting away to, stop, to solitude and spending time with our Father. It builds our ability to believe. I think sometimes we get so stuck because we feel like we haven't seen God moving or we haven't seen what we've been praying about. And we're like, God, where are you? And he's like, are you spending time with me? The question is, where is your faith at today? See, are you passively waiting for a miracle or are you preparing for the miracle? I think it's easy for us to pray once, God, this is what I want. And then we sit back in our chair and we just passively wait when I think we're called to prepare, to prepare our own minds and prepare our own spirits and prepare our families and prepare our homes and prepare our churches and prepare for the miracle that's coming. Are you passively waiting or are you waiting expectantly and preparing for what God's going to do? See, I think waiting for a miracle isn't about doing nothing. I think sometimes it is. But I think a lot of the time it's about preparing yourself and preparing your faith for the future. I think so many times we take our hands off, we sit back and relax and we wait for God to do something. We, we, we think that just because we're behind the wheel of the car and we're steering, we're waiting for God to push us and God's like, you gotta start moving, you gotta start having some momentum, you gotta start going, you can't just, we can't just continue to sit back and wait. We need to start going and start preparing for the miracle. And how do we start preparing? By spending the time with the one who brings the miracle. By spending our time with the one who gave us the dream or gave us the vision or gave us the family or gave us the home. We spend time with him and that's how we start preparing ourselves for what is about to take place. And Jesus was a master of solitude. And this is a very unique passage in Luke chapter five, verse 15 to 16. But despite Jesus's instructions, the report of his power spread even faster. This is when he says, you know, don't tell everybody. And vast crowds came to hear him preach and to be healed of their diseases. Verse 16, what happened? But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. See, as Jesus' ministry became more public, and he became more famous and his ministry became more famous across the land. What happened is his need for solitude grew as well. Because he was pouring everything that he had out. 
and he realized the deep need for connection and solitude. He realized his desperate need to be filled every time he went to go out. I think sometimes in North America, we're very good at going out, even if we only got a few drops left in the bucket. You know, we see even just in North America, we're seeing burnout rising and anxiety and depression and mental illness on a rise. And you know what we're seeing? We're also seeing prayer and worship time in families and even Christian families going down. The place where we get strong is the place that we're neglecting the most. See, I think oftentimes that in success, we often forget how we got there. What if we went to solitude, not only when we were in the valley, but when we were on the mountain? See, Jesus' ministry was growing and people were getting healed. It's amazing. But what he still did is dedicate time to solitude. But I think sometimes for us, when we're doing well, maybe we bought our house or we got the car or we we got married and then we're like, okay, I don't need to stop praying for my spouse anymore because I got him. That's when you need to start praying more, yeah. Because now you're not just praying for you, you're praying for somebody else and maybe even some kids along the way. But when success comes, oftentimes our, our thing is to go to social media or our idea is to go tell the world when Jesus is like, what about me? Because when we're successful, when things are going well, it's very easy to neglect the reason we got there. Even the strength that we got from our moments of prayer. See, I think it's sometimes easy in our, in our hardships or easy when we're in the valley to go to prayer. Why? Because we feel like we need it. And of course we do. But when we're on the mountaintop, oftentimes our eyes go away from God and they go to us. Look at me. But Jesus never got to that place. Why? Because it says he often went away to pray and have solitude and spend time with God because why? He needed it. To spend time with the the Father, he, he needed it. And you know what? If Jesus needed it, so do I. So do I, so do you. We need moments of solitude and prayer to not just in the valley say, God, I need you, but on the, on the mountaintop say, God, I need you even more. Because th- they say that success is often harder than failure. To carry the success is often harder and to duplicate success is also extremely hard. If we want to keep on going, we got to turn to Jesus and have solitude in it. See, Oswald Chambers, who was an evangelist and teacher, found this quote, I find it fascinating. It says this, solitude with God repairs the damage done by the fret and noise and clamor of the world. And I I read this quote and I think it's so true for me. The solitude with God repairs the damage done by the fret and noise and clamor of the world. Yeah, what's interesting is oftentimes that's what we crave is the fret and the noise and the clamor of the world. But we gotta change our spirit to start craving solitude. Start, start craving time with Jesus. Start craving time for us to grow our spirit and, and to get stronger and get more courageous and to be more faithful to be more forgiving, to be more loving with our kids and with our spouses. See, we all need repairs. You know, you see a ship that comes out of a storm. It's often not in the best shape. It's been battered by the waves. You know, you may have made it through, but that doesn't mean you don't need repairs. That doesn't mean that you don't need healing. That doesn't mean that you don't need time with Jesus. Yes, you made it through and it's amazing, but that doesn't mean it wasn't painful. We all need repairs. See, if you're battered by the waves, if you're feeling weak, if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling weary, it's time to find some solitude. It's time to find some rest. And they're continuing the story in verse 26. It says this, and when the disciples saw him walking on water, I love this part, they were terrified in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then Peter called out to him one of the wildest requests in the entire Bible. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come out to you walking on the water. That's not the request I would do. I'd be like, Jesus, get in the boat, bro. It's safer in here, right? I'm not going out to the sea. But Jesus says, yes, come, come on. Let's do it. 
You want to walk on water? Let's go. Come on. Step out of the boat. So Peter went over the side of the boat. And I imagine he probably needed some help. John maybe was letting him down under the water, being like, see you in heaven, bro. You know, like, I don't know. Like, that's how I picture it. And I was like, man, they must have, maybe had to let him out of the boat. Maybe he jumped off. I don't know how, but it says he got off the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. This is the miracle, right? Peter walks on water. Again, a kind of an odd request of Peter. It's like, let me come to you. Let me walk on water with you. And maybe he was trying to impress his friends. Maybe he was trying to determine if this person really, really was Jesus. Maybe this was a faith building exercise for him. I don't fully know. But Jesus responds, come on, come on. So Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water. Have you ever done something? Not realizing you're doing it until you're already doing it and then you fail when you realize you're actually doing what you're doing? You ever seen a kid trying to learn how to walk? Marin was learning how to stand a few months ago and it, it is funny to watch. There's nothing funnier to me, and I say this in the kindest way, than kids falling, okay? I, I, like my kid, Marin, she'll, she'll, we'll have her standing. Then all of a sudden she realizes she's standing and she just falls over. She has the strength to do it. She's capable of doing it. She just proved to herself she can do it. Yet as soon as she realizes the danger of standing, she's like, no chance, falls right on her bum. This is kids learning how to walk. And I think if we want to build our faith, if we want to learn how to walk by faith, you know what we have to do? We got to learn how to walk again. Because you know what's going to happen? Is you're going to stand up in the middle of the storm, super courageous. I got this. And then the first wave comes, you're like, I don't got this. You're going to get back in the boat. And you know what I want to tell you? There's nothing wrong with that. But what I want to encourage you is with, don't stay in the boat again. Get back out and keep on trying to walk. We've got to learn to walk again. We've got to learn to, to, to grow our faith. And it might be slow. See, I think for some of us, for our entire lives, we've not walked by faith. We've walked by what we see. We've walked by our circumstance or we've walked by the storm. Every, we've walked by what we see. And God's like, you got to close your eyes and trust me. Because all we see is the circumstance. All we see is the waves. But Jesus sees what's happening inside of us. This is exactly what happened with Peter while walking on water. He didn't realize that he, what he was doing until he realized he couldn't do what he was doing. Yet his beautiful thing is he's the only one to actually take the step. Sometimes we have to take a step out of the boat. We have to take action. We have to do something. See, I think sometimes we're asking God, God, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. This is where I want to go to university. And I'm like, have you even applied? Have we taken a step? Have we done anything to push ourselves towards our goal or towards our future? How have we taken the step? And do you know what the truth is? It's just probably not going to come naturally. But we have to take a step. See, I think oftentimes we're called to enter into the storm rather than run away. We don't want storms, right? Why? Because they're exhausting. Again, you see the ships coming back from sea. You're like, man, those sailors had a rough time. They're probably pretty tired. They're probably exhausted. Yes, the storms are exhausting. So we don't want to go through storms. But I think rather than sometimes praying that the storm will cease, it might be time to pray for courage to make it through. To pray for the faith to get up and walk on the water. What are you asking God for in your life? What are you asking God to do? What, what do you need right now? What, do you, what is it that you've been asking God for? It might be time to step out of the boat. Because I think God, Jesus might be whispering to you the whole time, come on, come on, let's do it. I think sometimes the first step, the scary step is just getting out of the boat, saying, God, I trust you. So let's finish uh, this story here. Verse 31, Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. 
<laughs> and this is like the, the humble correction or like you know, the holy correction. You have so little faith. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped and then, then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. So I think we all need to know that even if we get out of the boat and we take our first step and it goes in, we're not actually, you know, our faith might not be there yet. Jesus will always pick you back up. He'll always be there to catch you. No matter how far we run away, he'll be there to pick us back up when we inevitably fall. He's never too far away to pick you up out of the water. See, Jesus is always there in the middle of the storm. What is he doing? He's proving who he is, right? They said, hey, you truly are. It's tough, it's tough to doubt, you know. It's tough to not believe when you see Jesus and you're at three o'clock in the morning walking on water towards you in the middle of a storm. Then one of your best friends gets out of the water. He's walking on water too. You're like, yeah, I believe now. And they say, you truly are the son of God. This, this situation, this moment is impossible. No matter what storm you're in, he's right beside you the whole way, ready to pick you up, but also ready to give you hum- holy correction and holy encouragement. This is what you got to do better next time. This is why you're sinking. You have little faith. Is we got to build our faith and stop doubting what is possible. No matter where you find yourself, he will be there. And we see this in Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Why? Because you're close beside me. Your rod and your staff, they protect and comfort me. Even in the darkest valley, even with the biggest waves, even on the mountaintops, even at home, he's right beside you the whole time. No matter where you find yourself, he's right beside you. And he's there to pick you back up. Even if we're the one who led ourselves to the darkest valley, He'll be there to help us and his rod and his staff will protect us and comfort us. We don't have to be afraid because the, the one who created the waves is fighting for you and fighting for me. And he's fighting with us and he's fighting for us. And he will never leave us or forsake us. And this is exactly what it says in Deuteronomy 31. Verse eight, do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. I was reading it out of this, the NLT, New Living Translation. I liked how it said this. The Lord will personally go before you. Go himself. And he will be with you. See, he goes before us and he blazes the trail. He sets the foundation. See, he walked on water before Peter. He proved it was possible before we even knew it was possible. See, the situation in front of you might seem that there's no exit or there's no way out. It might seem like, like, like you're stuck or you might be at the time where everything is success, but you're like, how do I make this last? How do I make this success sustainable? How do I make sure that I don't lose what I've given? And I wanna encourage you, the best way to do it is realize that God is there with you no matter where you go and not forget to have solitude and connection with him. He lays the foundation. He goes before us. See, the storm in front of us, it's not news to him. He's not scared by it. In fact, he's walking on top of it, being like, do you want to come with me? Do you want to join me? Come. And we can have the boldness to go and step out of the boat. To, the boldness to do things we never thought were possible. To see addiction fall away in a moment. To see our kids who ran away from Jesus come back home. To see healing. To see our marriages restored. To see our mental health restored. boldness to step out and go 
And I shared earlier, but there's a big attack, I think, on mental health, especially for, you know, the next generation. And you know, my prayer for my kids, my prayer for your kids is that they will be saved from it. My prayer is they'll be healed from it. I will have faith to keep on praying and keep on going, to see the dreams and desires he's laid on our hearts. We'll see them happen. See, every miracle is prefaced by a solitude. I don't know where you are in this journey that, you know, Peter was through or Jesus, you know, he started. Jesus, how he got there was moments of solitude. See, I think if you're in need of a miracle, it begins with deep connection to the Father. We have to feed our spirit by creating space for solitude in our schedule, time for connection. See, Jesus' ministry, you know what it was? Busy and loud. Everywhere he goes, there's crowds. And if you've ever been in a crowd, it's pretty noisy. It was busy and it was loud. Lots of people here and there, lots to do, schedules to keep, right? People to see, people to heal. Jesus was busy. Yet he still made time for solitude. He still made time for rest. And I think sometimes in our culture, we become prideful because we think we don't need it. But then we look and realize we do. Become prideful. We think we're strong enough. We're courageous enough. Our faith is good, but the next storm might be coming. And if our foundation isn't built on the solid ground, it's going to destroy us. We need solitude. It doesn't matter how busy we are. If we're too busy for solitude and prayer, we have some deeper problems. He had to go and listen to the Father and build his faith and fill his cup. And after solitude, what do we do? We've got to step out of the boat to take a step of faith, do something. See, what you're believing for, I don't think will come by accident. It doesn't necessarily come by just passively waiting, but by actively preparing. Now in the waiting, we can also actively prepare. We've got to prepare for the fruit and we've got to create space for the fruit. See, we don't stay in a place of solitude forever. We get filled and we go. And then as we take that step out of the boat, we got to realize Jesus is there the whole time, willing to pick us up and take us out of the water. He's ready to catch us when we fall and catch us when we fail, to correct us when we need correction and to encourage us when we need encouragement, to love us when we need love, to forgive us when we need forgiveness, to bring peace when we're in chaos, to bring joy when we're stuck in anger and we're stuck in fear. I don't know what you're believing for in your own life. I don't know what storm you're leaving, the storm you're in or the storm you're about to go in. But know that Jesus is there with you. He isn't distant and he's there for you and he will help you along the journey. As I was praying and just even now as I'm you know, thinking and and hearing. I think right now, I think a lot of some of us in this room, we need faith for our marriages. I don't know your story. I don't know maybe what you're going through in your relationship, but I feel there might be some of us here today where this is what we need. We need faith. We need faith to rise up because of the turmoil between the two of us. Maybe because of our own mental health struggles or our own fears that our connection is low. Maybe we've, you know, we've stopped being friends or we've stopped dating each other. But I believe that for some of us today, God is saying, hey, there's gotta be faith to rise up, that it is possible to make it through the storm you're facing as a couple. It's possible to make it through. 
But I also don't think it's just marriages. I think it's also some of us, our relationship with our children, where things with our kids are tough. Our kids, they maybe they don't even want to talk to us or maybe we said something years ago that ruined the relationship or unforgiveness is raining and our, 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 our doubt is high and our faith is low when it comes to our relationship with our kids. I want to encourage you Let faith rise up that it is possible. I think relationally, just across the board, we need faith. Faith that God will restore our relationships. That even if we go back to that that quote, the Oswald Chambers quote, that solitude with God repairs the damage done by the fret and noise and clamor of the world. I think for us, that might be our prayer for our marriage. It might be our prayer for our relationship with our children. It might be our prayer for our mental health that we need to spend time in solitude and that God will repair the damage done by the fret and noise and clamor of the world. I want to encourage you no matter what it is, and you might be in this place where it's success. You're like, we got it, we made it. But now what? How do we maintain? How do we keep going? Solitude. Go away for a few days if you can. Go away for a day. Go away for a few hours. Because in the mountaintop or the valley, we need solitude and we need connection with Jesus. So I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to pray for our marriages, pray for our kids, pray for our health and our mental health. So God, we come before you today as a family and God, every request, every storm that we're in as individuals, as a church, God, I thank you. Number one, that you got us. Number one, God, we trust you. You got us. You're paving the way. You're creating a way out. You're creating a way through. God, I pray for our marriages here in this room today. Those are our marriages that are struggling. Where we're not sure where to go. We're not sure where to turn. We're not sure if it's, we're even going to make it. God, I pray for our marriages today, for restoration of relationship and faith to rise up in Jesus' name. For each marriage to be about you and that your love will reign in our relationships. God, I pray for our relationship with our children, God. I pray for faith to rise up. God, I pray that pride will go to the side and we'll be humble. Learn how to apologize. Learn how to let faith rise up, that we can trust you with our kids, that we can trust you with the relationship, that forgiveness will reign in our relationships with our kids. And I pray for our mental health and we pray for the mental health of our kids in this generation. God, I thank you for healing in Jesus' name. God, for us, for anxiety and depression to be replaced with joy, peace, love, that the fruit of your spirit will be made known inside of us. You've not given us a spirit of fear of power and love and a sound mind. God, I pray that we know the truth. We know it. As we believe it, God, as we know it, it'll set us free. And God, no matter what we're going through in here today, God, I pray that we realize you're right there. You're right there. In the midst of the success, God, you're right there. In the midst of our failure, you're right there. But help us learn to rely on you and not rely on our own strength or our own courage, but we trust you. And God, I pray that we leave today as we head into summer. God, I thank you for energy. I pray for rest for our souls. I pray for moments of connection for us as families and as a church. And God, I thank you that you are doing something powerful in our midst. You're doing something powerful in our lives. And God, that your will be done. 
on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.